Hi everyone, my name is Bilgin. I'm the engineering manager uh, for PyTorch on device acceleration. Today I have um, Chen and Kimish with me, and we're going to be talking about running LLMs on the edge with AI accelerators. Um, to enable LLMs on the accelerators, we have partnered with some of the industry leaders, with ARM on the CPU, um, with Apple to enable running LLMs on the a &E, with Core ML and MPS teams, and with Qualcomm and MediaTek to enable LLMs on their MPUs. We're going to go through some of the challenges that we ran into while we were working on this, um, how we fit those large models into these small devices, how we accelerated uh, through um, some of the custom kernels that we ended up developing, how we upstreamed those. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the feature uh, roadmap ideas that we have over here with our partners. Um, so lots of exciting results and lots of exciting news over here. Um, and without further ado, I'll give it to Kimish. Uh, thanks, Bill. OK, so the well, first question you might ask, there, why are we doing LLMs on Edge? I mean, for one, like everybody has a phone, right? And most of us have phones powerful enough to run different things. So that means that, you know, uh, as a result, we can enable privacy enhancing and uh, personalized models on edge with reduced latency. But not only that, if you are living in a geography where your uh, data bandwidth available is very limited, then running uh, inference on cloud is not an option for you, right? So having these available personalized on the device is very helpful. But enabling this uh, on the device has its own challenges because of the constraints on these devices. Such devices include, on one end of the spectrum, laptop, desktop, whereas on the other end of the spectrum, you have smart glasses, embedded devices, and whatnot. And these have uh, very different characteristics for available memory as well as power from one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum. Uh, so uh, uh, plus the memory system, uh, all these uh, systems also are very heterogeneous. They have a different uh, kind of compute available on device. Uh, so these constraints throw some challenges for on-device deployment. For example, large models which have billions of parameters uh, don't easily fit into the on-device memory. So you have to figure out how to reduce the model size. Not only that, if you have to deploy entirely separate models for different use cases, for example, message summarization or smart compose, that doesn't quite work well because you, know, you have limited disk space available. Uh, we also have to make sure that these models run efficiently to meet the latency and power requirement. You don't want to burn your phone while running these models. This is what we'll focus uh, in this talk. OK, so when we talk about efficient execution, we, there are really mainly two bottlenecks we are talking about. One is the memory bandwidth, and one is the compute. The, the size of the models are generally so big that for every inference, you're getting billions of parameters from the off-chip memory. So you have to make sure that you are able to exploit the available memory bandwidth to the maximum and not leaving any uh, bandwidth on the table. On the compute side, you want to make sure that you are running the uh, compute in the most efficient way, meaning maybe you need to uh, leverage integer execution or leverage AI accelerators that can run this compute in a more efficient, power efficient way effectively. Right. So how does Executor enable the efficient execution? It enables this through its different parts of the stack. Quantization, for example, addresses uh, the memory bandwidth constraint, where we can reduce the model size and reduce the pressure on the bandwidth. Uh, uh, for compute, we leverage delegation, where we can delegate parts of the model or the entire model to different accelerators, which can run these models more efficiently. And using custom op transformation, users can take uh, some parts of the model which are uh, specific and apply operator fusions to uh, generate custom operators that can run more efficiently which may not be supported by accelerators. In the next part of the talk, my colleague Chen here will go through the details in each of these. So LM on edge, where are we? On CPU, we have optimum kernel and rely on XM pack. On accelerators, we are working with our partners to lower LM running on the backends, including CoreML, Metal, Qualcomm, MediaTek to achieve optimum performance with minimum power consumption. Next, I'm going to tell you about the recent developments from our partners to integrate all these tags on Exitorch. So let's take a look at the fundamental features needed to enable LMs on Edge. 
First of all, quantization, LM, large language model, meaning the weight is large. So the first optimization we will do is quantization to compress the model size. Second, we need to optimize the memory. The bandwidth among different memory regions are just so different, and we need to plan them carefully, especially we are when we are memory bound. Decoding acceleration, users just want to get the result right after they type the prompt. Fine tuning, we would like to fine tune different LoRa adapters for different tasks, like summarization, or writing an email, or like, uh, yeah, so, and then dev tools. It's a pain to debug the accuracy and profile, especially LM. With our partners, we can help you to de debug even if it's inside the black box accelerator. Here are some example techniques, including like example techniques like uh, 4-bit quantization, KV cache, batch prefill, LoRa, and profi profiler. So on CPU, it's heavily rely on XM pack. The 4-bit kernel was contributed and also upstreamed. There are a few variants targeted for decode and prefill. And the fuse attention with KV cache is a custom kernel to not only fuse the kernel, but also doing in-place KV cache update. So if we just rely on CPU, we may not get the optimum performance. So next, I'm going to tell you how accelerators are going to help from our partners. We will start with CoreML, a framework built by Apple to leverage their hardwares, including CPU, GPU, and neural engine. For CoreML backend, they have enabled the following features. They were like announced in the recent WWDC and now are natively supported in XUTorch. These features including 4-bit kernel and KV cache for memory management. So this update KV cache in memory, which decreased the communication overhead. Thanks to all the hard work from the team, we also have the dev tools to tell us what's going on inside the hardware. Next, the plan is to support more features, including dynamic shape and also prioritization, pruning lower big kernel to further compress the model. LoRa is also part of the plan. Metal is a low-level, low-overhead hardware accelerated API created by Apple, and it is designed and optimized for Apple platforms. To, and also, it provides the optimum accelerations across IPs. In the recent WDC, Metal announced the 4-bit linear kernel, and it is now also available in XUTorch. Custom operators is a bit unique here, and it provides just more flexibility to users. The Metal library is compatible with a wide range of OS. Dev tool is also integrated. So as we can see in the features, Metal has the quantization, decoding acceleration, and the dev tools here. Qualcomm MPU is a powerful unit, and we can quantize the whole model and leverage the 4-bit kernel with the latest quantization algorithm, spin quant from Meta. RM not, RM, RMS norm op is fused. Model sharding is used for running models on memory-constrained devices. AI Hub is a collection of optimized models, and we also support them. DevTool is also integrated here. So what's next? We sharing for batch preview will be one, and we will also, as well as LoRa fine tuning. MediaTek is our new partner. So this year, we are working closely with them to integrate it with, with XUTorch. The feature list here are all the things they use to enable LM on MPU. For acceleration, different tensor tiling are applied for preview and decode. They also use GPTQ-based quantization and enable 4-bit LM running on MPU. For memory, they shard the model to make it easier to allocate memory streams and using ring buffers to reduce the cache traffic. Next, we can expect new cache management, more decoding acceleration uh, algorithms, and also lower fine tuning. There will be live demos in the booth. Please check them out. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Yeah, I guess like we also have a booth, so uh, it, we, we, we can take questions there or here. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or?
you, you mentioned you change the tiling depending on if you're doing pre-fill or decoding. Um, I was interested if you could talk a little bit more about why you do that. Oh, I guess like, um, is that for the slides for the CPU or MediaTek? So, so it's a, a different computer. Uh, for uh, decode, it is really gem V. For the most of the linear layers, which is like you know activations are vectors. Uh, so the kind of uh, is more memory bandwidth bound computer in the prefill case where you are really doing gem and like say your uh, prompt length is like you know 16, then you are doing 16 by whatever compared to one by whatever. So it does benefit by using a different tiling mechanism and different type of kernel. So you actually do have separate kernels for doing a decode gem V versus prefill gem kernels. Thank you again, everyone. Looks like one more question, one sec. Yeah, great talk. Uh, I'm the Infinite Edge uh, AI TSC chair. Encourage you to, to join, and we have a weekly meeting. And also just a technical question. So do you use the container at the edge, and you use Wesson or just lightweight of a container, or is it micro microservice framework, those things? Um, we don't necessarily use um, any of those images, but you know, as the application developer, you can always put Executorch and um, all of the application logic into an image of your choosing. Yeah. No Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. So I don't. I don't think we have Wasm integration uh, and things like that right now. And it's mostly around uh, kernels which are directly integrated in the application, rather than at a like learning as a container. It's not doesn't run as a web container. Uh, thank you, everyone.